Hi, I'm Janet Gunn, and welcome to Focus TV. This is my segment of Fearless Females, and we're here in Los Angeles. Today, I'm interviewing Luz Avella Kinsel. She's the author of Liberate Yourself, Your Past is Not Your Prison. Not only has she, is she an author, but she's a wife, she's a mother. She launched and created her YouTube channel, which is about nutrition for the body and for the soul and she's a speaker and she's going to talk to us about what motivated to write her book which is now available for us in english and spanish i love that hi how are you thank you thank you so much for having me here today oh so happy to have you well i just want to start by saying um just cover to cover it's filled with incredible inspirational information you know i i think that uh it's unbelievable it's uh, how, how courageous you are to uh write this so tell me what motivated you like what started this all well first of all thank you so much for having me here i'm yeah. so excited to be here and to be able to express my message of health and wellness through my book and this yeah. is very much and by you helping me i appreciate it very much so what motivated me to write this book um I wrote this book with a sole motivation of helping others to improve their lives, to get out of their prison, uh, to get out of their emotional, mental, or physical prisons, and uh, and to live a healthier life. I, I also I I was in my own. I went through my own journey mm -hmm. where I liberated myself from my own yeah. prison, uh, created by dysfunctional um, family situation, impoverished childhood in the Dominican Republic, and my own health. Uh, that I had to completely heal by changing my diet and lifestyle. So that, and also in the process of healing myself, um, which usually happens a lot of people when they go through the process of self-healing, they develop compassion, not just for themselves, but for others, because we realize we're all suffering, we're all in this together. And that's very much what motivated me to write this book, yeah. to help other people uh, with uh, their own issues. Well, you grew up in the Dominican Republic, uh, in not pleasant conditions at all so what how did you get from where you grew up you traveled to New York you moved to New York so how what was the journey between there and getting to New York how did you get there <laughs> well it's a long journey yeah you don't have to write my book yes you do have, you, you, you will need to read the book yeah. for sure because to understand the full story yeah but, but yeah. looking back on my childhood moving from Dominican Republic to where I am now overcoming all these different obstacles uh, one thing that really kept me, um, that looking back, that really kept me uh, going was my faith. Mm -hmm. I always believed in something bigger than myself. I called it God. And, and I always uh, remained committed, motivated. I always kept the hope, even though there were situations in my life that I, uh, I didn't know how I was going to get through. But just mm -hmm. having faith, motivation, commitment, and hope kept me going. And the rest, you will have to read the book. Okay, <laughs> for sure. When you, when you were growing up, and you would be going to sleep, would you envision yourself as someone else or did you want to be in somewhere else? Like in the years, did you find yourself, because I was talking about, you know, like sometimes when we're, we think about where we want to be and who we want to be and what we want to be, that eventually the universe will match that up. Mm -hmm. Did you do that when you were growing up? Of course. And um, not even knowing it, you were doing it? You know, um, like I said before, having faith, having hope that something was going to change. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even in my darkest moments, um, I always kept that hope. And, uh, and, you know, you envision a life better for yourself. Yes, every single day. Because I keep, in my heart, um, I wish something different. This is yeah. another type of lifestyle that I wanted. I didn't want to be in, in an environment where there's abuse, neglect. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just the faith. The faith came going that this was one day was going to change. Can you also talk about the disease that you had when you became so ill? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was yeah. quite a journey. Yeah. I mean, I, how you did that with again? That's a long journey. Wow! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I had never heard yeah. about this disease. Is it called pica? Is that right? Oh, growing up, you mean? Yes. Yeah, pica. Sorry, I was so I thought you were talking oh. about the disease that changed my life. That being too. A social worker to a certified health coach. You sure, that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, so I am a certified health coach, but prior to that, I worked as a social worker helping people with uh, families and children and adults dealing with emotional and mental issues. A few years ago, I became very sick. I, um, I developed um, 
I had a, my white blood cell counts were very depleted. And so as a result of that, I didn't have, those people who don't know what white blood cells are, those are the ones, I call them soldiers, right? They help yeah. me fight. Yeah. So because I didn't have any soldiers, mine were gone. I had a, a whole host of different infections. I also had a developed rheumatoid arthritis. So it developed into many different other diseases. And unfortunately, I went through so many different doctors and they couldn't really figure out what the problem is, mm -hmm. what the problem was. And it was not until I changed um, my diet and lifestyle that my health completely got better. Mm -hmm. So I became obsessed with uh, um, nutrition and healing, food and healing, because I didn't really know that I spoke for so many years and yet my cure was in the kitchen. Yeah. So that uh, motivated me to go back to school and get my uh, certification in health coach. So now I empower people to improve their um, lives through changing their diet and lifestyles. And on your YouTube channel, you do a lot of cooking, you do your recipes, so it's really helpful because you can actually watch what you're doing and, and uh, educating people on um, GMOs, uh, you know, fructose, sugar, all these things that our body doesn't need. And you believe by cutting those out has been a huge healer. Oh, I 100% right? believe that. Yeah. Because like I said, my health completely turned around yeah. once I started changing my diet. Yeah. And at the beginning, like I told you, I went through so many different doctors and, you know, they couldn't really figure out what was causing my white blood cells to be so depleted. So because they didn't know, they couldn't really cure it. Mm -hmm. So what I was getting was a lot of um, band-aids, if you call it, and it was through many different doctors. And it was not until I visited a um, holistic healer who suggested to change my diet. And um, at that point, I really, really be believed that food was, could be so uh, damaging to our health, especially mm -hmm. the type of food that I was eating, you know, processed food, refined foods, and, and also the lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, and when you start working, you're a full-time mother, uh, you don't really dedicate any time to yourself. The stress becomes part of your daily life. Yeah. And also, you know, helping um, working and a helping profession, which is very um, common for people usually helping other people, they're, they're completely full-time helping others they forget about mm. taking care of themselves mm -hmm. so it was a whole combination having to realize i need in order for me to heal completely i have to change my diet not only my diet i had to take care of myself i had to exercise and had to eat better so it was a complete transformation mentally emotionally and physically and you're, there's a terrific chapter on gratitude how you sum up gratitude and what happens when you really practice that so you see, you know, just being grateful for the little things, for the simple things, taking a breath, waking up, looking, you know, walking to the sink, brushing your teeth. You know, it's just to start with gratitude in that way. I love what you had to say about that. Um, along with um, walking meditations. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have that in common because I love to do that. I do it every morning. So can you tell us a little bit well, about that? Because I think that's a game changer. Thank you. And I'm so happy you do walking meditation. And I tell people you have to try, at least try. Yeah. I completely also uh, was part of uh, saving my life. And when you talk about being grateful, that was a plan that I developed. It's called Plan Plus. Mm -hmm. um, P-L-U-Z. And I call it um, lose at the end, L O Z, because yeah. lose in Spanish and in English means light. light. So really, that plan was that brought me through my darkness, yeah. that brought light to my life, and that's what I call the plan plus. And part of the plan is A B C. I developed into um, three stages: add movement, be grateful, and cherish your body. And uh, the part of being grateful. Once my health started to get better, I started to uh, appreciate life. Every single day that my health improved, it was like a new day, a new gift that God was giving me. So I started to be thankful for everything and uh, not just for my health, but everything around me. Because when you don't really have health, oh, um, you know, we tend to take our health for granted. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, um, to me, health is my most important thing right now. If uh, when, I was, when I was sick, I couldn't enjoy my kids. I couldn't right. enjoy any other things in life that life has to offer. I was miserable. I was in pain. So you realize how important health is. So every single day that I wake up in the morning and so thankful that I became part of my practice. Mm -hmm. And also I realized as you become more and more grateful, you realize how short life is. Yeah. So you don't want to carry around any anger. You don't want to carry around any um, resentment. You know, you want to live life, try to enjoy life as much as you can because life is short. And especially yeah. now I consider my life to be, the, to be a gift. So it's a gift that I just want to carry and be happy that I have this gift. Yeah. And that's part of being grateful. Help me. And also you talk about forgiveness, yes. you know, forgiveness, 
Because forgiveness is not always, it's not so easy to do. You're forgiving yourself. Yeah. You're freeing yourself. You're liberating yourself or that emotions that you carry with you. Mm -hmm. When you don't forgive, you carry anger, yeah. you carry depression, you carry resentment. And think about all the things those, things those emotions can do to your body. Right. Carry stress, you know, stress can cause a lot of physical pain, um, uh, pain, problems with your stomach and, and ability to sleep. So you're not really living. You're yeah. just uh, being miserable. Yeah. And that's a mental prison, isn't it? I <laughs> yes. mean, that is what yeah. you talk about, a mental exactly. prison. Exactly. That's yeah. a mental prison. So. And again, the part of forgiving is just realizing that you deserve to be happy. Yeah. And by forgiving other people, I mean, by forgiving, you're forgiving yourself. You're giving yourself the opportunity to, to enjoy life. Well, you open your book with for honoring your past. Yeah. Right? Because you really would, none of us would be who we are if we didn't have our past. And it's, you get, you, that's what the other thing, too, is that you really over you overcame so many obstacles and also it was so touching when I read about you said that you wish you could go back to that little girl in the Dominican Republic and, and tell her and hug her. Have, have you done that? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I do tell the girl and whoever because I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one going through that. Yeah. And I do tell people in the same type of situation because sometimes when we uh, grow up in an environment where there's abuse and neglect uh, we think that nothing's ever going to change. Yeah. So what I want to tell that girl or that boy mm -hmm. <laughs> is keep the faith. Yeah. Keep the hope. Whatever's happening right now is not your fault. And as you get older, as you grow older, you will be able to make better, better um, choices. You will be right. able to get out of that situation and create a better life for yourself. Yeah. Uh, we can find you on your YouTube channel. Um, and, and by the way, YouTube is in Spanish, right? <laughs> so it, it's this book, you know, when you open it, like you say, if you're opening up my book, it's you'll find something in it. There's something for you. There's something definitely for everybody in, in this book. And we know somebody that would be so appreciative of receiving it too. So I also think it makes uh, such a great gift. Mm -hmm. You said when you're big in... Um, uh, you got inspiration from Oprah. She talked about attitude, changing your attitude, changing your words, the, your thinking. So that's so, so much of it too. Yeah. You know? I mean, Oprah has been the biggest inspiration. If you uh, follow Oprah, you know her life story. Yeah. You know all the things that the woman has overcame in her life. Yeah. And yeah, look where she is today. And mm -hmm. one of the tools that she uses is you can change your past. Forgiveness. You can change your attitude. And um, and also my message that I try to get across this book is you can take control of your health. Yeah. You can make a better choice for yourself. And it's never too late to change. And in my book, I'm giving you the tools that you need to uh, make those changes. Yeah. You d and the tools are very clear. So and, yes, very clear. And I yeah. also use stories of people, real people, yes, yes. who either got out yep. or stay in their prisons. And the reason why I also use stories is because it makes people feel less alone. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to compassion, you realize that you're not the only one suffering and yeah. you want to help other people to get out of their own prisons as well. Yeah. Well, you did an incredible job. Thank you. <laughs> um, I always like to ask the, my guests a couple of questions. So in the morning, uh, or today, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that Me I'm too. Here. I'm grateful you're here too. Thank and you. what's your morning inspiration? Um, I already said it. Every morning that I wake up, I always say thank you, God, yeah. for this gift of life. May yeah. I use it wisely. May I use it to help. I mean, to help and not to hurt. Yeah. The end. Yeah. Thank you. And if you could hold life. anybody's hand today, whose would it be? Uh, my daughter went to college a few weeks ago, oh, and I yeah. missed her dearly. <laughs> so I wish she was here. Oh. And I have to hold her hands and let her know how much I love her. Oh, and I God. miss her too. Well, I'm sure your family is so incredibly mm -hmm. proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. And again, I love your name, Luz, means light. You have shed so much light on so many things in this book. Thank you. So thank you for sharing your story and for being here. Well, thank you for yeah. having me. Thank, thank you. So much. I Thank you.